Testing your products the right way in 2023 and onwards has become extremely important because in 2022, we all know what happened when it came to e-commerce. We all know what happened when it came to Google ads. And unfortunately, the reality is starting 2023 and basically any year after this point on, it's going to be more and more competitive each year. So it becomes extra important for you to know exactly how to test your product from your e-commerce brand the right way because there are either two scenarios that can happen when it comes to testing number one scenario you don't know how to test and as a result you end up just flunking the test just kind of doing random things just throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping something sticks. Or situation number two, you know how to test the right way because you're one of my OG followers. You watch this video until the end. In this case, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a lot of different products which just start selling like hot cakes within your Google Ads account. All of your Google Ads campaigns become ultimate sources of winning products. And as a result, what happens is Google rewards you by optimizing your ad account even more, giving you higher quality scores and all sorts of good stuff like like that to in the end make you one happy e-commerce store owner but again as i mentioned in the beginning of this video unfortunately 95 percent of e-commerce store owners have no clear clue how to do it so now let's answer the main question how exactly is proper product testing done now keep in mind whenever it comes to google ads whenever it comes to e-commerce brands regardless of whether it's my own e-commerce brand or a client's e-commerce brand under my google ads agency your marketing which if you're doing around thirty thousand dollars or more per month you need a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level go on to my website at euromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen but regardless of what niche it is in there are three different distinctive phases i take all of my products through phase number one it's called the testing phase this is obviously very self-explanatory this is where you actually test products because i mean you have no idea if the product works or if it doesn't work you might have done proper product research you might have followed my other videos on how to source products all of that good stuff but without really spending money on it without really understanding what the audience wants we don't have a clear idea of whether those products are going to work or not but this kind of leads us into phase number two which is called the profitability phase now keep in mind every phase has its own testing phase we're going to cover each of these phases testing portions in this video but keep in mind for now that every phase has testing so the second phase as i mentioned profitability phase number three phase is is called the scaling phase this is where you're essentially trying to basically double your revenue from your winning product you're trying to spend as much money as possible on them but again like i mentioned keep in mind scaling phase also has its own testing phase so now that we kind of got that covered let's start off with the first phase which is just the testing phase now there are two different ways you can go about this in 2023 and onwards when it comes to testing your products the first kind of way to go about this a strategic way even it's for more of those newer ad accounts so if you're already scaling with other placements or if you're not even scaling you just started with your e-commerce brand doesn't matter this first strategy is for you so what you want to do is you want to go with the general testing route now this is kind of a revolutionary way i've always recommended from the beginning so this ad account that you see right here was an e-commerce brand which i started early on in 2019 basically early 2020 even and we can see exactly what campaigns i had running during that time so the first campaign campaign was this campaign at the very top and all of these essentially are kind of the same campaigns all general testing campaigns the first one was kind of started again after the second one was removed so I'm just kind of go unchoose those that were really not that big of a deal when it came to the testing phase but essentially when I started this e-commerce brand I went with a 2-1 launch strategy which I literally always talk about in my YouTube videos this 2-1 launch strategy is as the follows so you are going to be launching two different standard shopping campaigns and by the way it depends on when you're watching this video who knows maybe google ads decides that they don't want standard shopping anymore and this becomes kind of extinct right now when i'm recording this video at least thankfully standard shopping campaigns are still there and they're really the ideal campaign types for those newer ad accounts with little to no data so what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the two one launch strategy two general testing campaigns one high bid one low bid and then one branded search campaign so in this case for this ad account i didn't necessarily start a branded search campaign 
campaign when I began because obviously nobody was there on YouTube to tell me to launch a branded search campaign. So I just kind of had to figure my way out. But in terms of the testing campaigns, the general testing campaign, you're going to have one general testing campaign that runs on maximized clicks. And we're still going to do a very high bid for this. So this campaign right here, I kind of changed it to manual CPC with enhanced CPC later on down the line. But initially when I began this campaign, it was on maximized clicks and that's what it should be. So you want to choose maximized clicks always and set a maximum CPC bid limit of anywhere between 45 cents to 60 cents. Now, what the number is, is up to you. You would kind of need to play around because again, there is real no right or wrong answer here. But just kind of set a bid limit between that range. I've seen that range work very well. But that's the first general testing campaign. I'm not going to go over how to launch it because there's a lot of videos I have on my channel where it shows you how to launch it. But in a strategic approach, you want to have one high bid campaign and the next general testing campaign, which also is going to be maximized clicks for testing this campaign you're going to be running at an 11 cent bid now in my previous videos this used to be 10 cents but you know we can't do anything about competition increasing we got to kind of go with the flow so to really make this campaign worthwhile let's increase it by one cent because before it used to be 10 cents now it's 11 cents so that's kind of the basic strategy to kind of start testing your product if you're a newer ad account just these two general testing campaigns and then one branded search campaign which can of course run on manual cpc and in order to start that if you're not sure how to create that i have a video on my channel which you can check out but essentially that's just to target your branded keywords once you start getting traction with your general testing campaign. that's again the general strategy for the two one launch which is for the newer ad account now what do you do if you already are running campaigns on your google ads account you have more than 25 to 30 sales already recorded on the google ads account but you still don't know how to test properly well let me tell you you're in the right place because now let's start discussing how to create a specific launch strategy for somebody like you with some data at least it doesn't have to be crazy amounts of data at least some data so i already have that kind of campaign running but it's a very similar approach to the two one launch strategy which we do for newer ad accounts but in this case instead of doing two general testing campaigns which are standard shopping campaigns we're going to be doing one performance max campaign and one standard shopping campaign so the performance max campaign if that is going to be our campaign to test all of our products and let google ads do the testing so in essence what i'm trying to say is don't think that you are much smarter than google's algorithm and don't go in and set any kind of maximize conversion value percentage so don't set a target row as here just thinking you can't set a limit to google's growth and you can set a limit to google when it starts to not do as well because in reality what's going to happen is if you set any type of target row as here it's going to limit your ability to scale it's going to limit your ability to test your product properly because again you setting a target row as here is like you setting a random bid with a general testing campaign and I mean, we all know how well that goes, especially if it's kind of like a very random bit. And if you don't know how it goes, let me tell you, it's not going to go good because again, we don't know what the right number is to put here. It could be 100%. It could be 5,000%. We don't know. And we don't want to kind of stop this campaign's growth and prevent it from testing properly. So what you want to do is have one general testing campaign, which is a performance max campaign with no target ROAS check. And here's the thing. You're not going to have any assets within the asset group either. Do not do this. If you have a million dollars of budget then by all means do this because if you add assets and by the way the more assets you add the more variability there is with your campaign but what's going to happen is google has to go through each asset it has to test each image each logo headline etc etc if you don't have big of a budget it's just going to blow through it trying to test stuff trying to figure stuff out and by the end you're going to be in a very big pothole so instead of what i recommend what i recommend is you start a brand new asset group and it's very easy to do this just click this plus button click new asset group group scroll all the way down and click save without adding anything in that's all you have to do but you can only do this after you have created the camp so just go ahead and create that asset group with nothing and just enable that disable the one with asset groups and that's all you have to do in order to launch this general testing campaign and as you can see and overall if we go back to the home page look at the overall ROAS we can see that this campaign is running at a fairly good ROAS and by the way keep in mind this is a testing campaign where so many people waste so much money they have like a 1x ROAS here I, I'm running on a 5x ROAS I know it's not spending too much money, but nonetheless, still a very good ROAS to have. So this is what happens when you launch it properly. And this is how you test with one performance max. Campaign. Now, the standard shopping campaign I was referring to make that the low bid campaign at 11 cents. Like I told you earlier that nothing changes there. So still launch it on maximize clicks, have it run at 11 cents, but that's pretty much it. And then a branded search campaign again, pretty self-explanatory product testing. Guide. But now we are done with actually launching something to test products. How do we now test the profitability? So like 
I mentioned, profitability also has its own testing phase. But essentially, what you do in order to start a profitability testing campaign is you take all of the products which are within the performance max campaign or even the low bid campaign, whatever has three to five sales or more, and it has been consistent sales, not once a month or something like that. What you do is you create a brand new performance max campaign. That's right, a brand new performance max campaign. Or you can copy this one, just go to edit right here, copy it, and then paste it in. And you can use the same settings as that performance max campaign has. And the main reason we're doing this is we want to now exclude all of the products from this new performance max campaign and only run those products which are semi winning products from this original campaign. And by the way, you can exclude the products from the original performance max, but I recommend you leave them there and just focus on the new performance max. Just kind of have a higher budget with that campaign. And the reason why I say don't exclude it from the original one is because if it doesn't end up being a winning product in that performance max campaign for whatever reason, and by the way, that's the testing phase where we're testing if that is a mega winner or not, if it's just going to be a semi winner. So that's essentially the testing portion of the profitability. But what you're going to do is you're just going to let those products run within that other campaign. You just started for profitability. You can name that campaign P max profitability phase or something like that. And just kind of let those products run in there. And you will notice a lot of them do good, but some just don't do good. So in that case, you can start another campaign, another performance max. This time it's the third performance max campaign called the losers campaign so with this losers campaign everything will be the same all the same settings but those products which did not do well in the second performance max you started for profitability will now get entered into this losers campaign so by this point you already have three different campaigns the first campaign the original testing campaign second campaign the profitability campaign where we're trying to basically sell those semi winners and the third campaign is the losers campaign so this is the portion again, as I mentioned, that is, we're testing stuff out within the profitability phase. Now let's move on to the third and final phase, which is called the scaling phase. And believe it or not, you also have to test within the scaling phase. You got to make sure that the product you're trying to scale is actually scale worthy. So in this case, what you do is whatever products you have in the second campaign, you started the profitability campaign, anything with 20 to 25 conversions, you're going to now put it into its own performance max. You're going to call this the P max scale campaign or you can call it whatever else you like and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all those products with 20 to 25 sales or more inside the scaling campaign to test those products if they're worthy of scale or not and the difference with this scaling campaign is the minimum budget you should put on this campaign is $200 so nothing less than $200 because obviously we're trying to scale this campaign we're not trying to play around so it's either it works or it doesn't and $200 a day is enough to kind of let us know if it's worthy of scaling or not not. And if it's worthy, then the campaign will take care of itself. It will start to scale it properly. But that's pretty much the testing portion of the scaling phase. Now, keep in mind, not every product can be scaled at this level. So you will notice some just flunk and don't do well. Well, that's why you have that losers campaign. You started earlier. So you have two options here. Either make it go back one level, put it back in the profitability campaign or put it in the losers campaign that you started. So now you can go either or direction with this doesn't really matter because now by this time you have a full on system to test your products and take them through every phase while testing them in that given phase. And that's how I am going to be testing my products in 2023 and onwards. Again, if you're doing $30,000 or more per month in revenue, you need a little bit of extra help testing your product, making them go to profitability, scaling, whatever the case is, go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But if you found any type of value in this video, destroy that like button destroy that subscribe button and check out these two videos right in front of my face that you might like when it comes to Google ads and I will see you in my next video.